Hey everyone, it's Brian for the AW Crew here on Facebook. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to give you a, an update on what's been happening with a project I've been experimenting with. I've been playing around with the Zulu SCSI um, boards that are out. They're based off of the same technology that uh, the SD to SCSI boards were built upon. But those boards, they're hard to find right now. And I think if you can find them, you know, they're about 420 bucks from the last time I saw any. But these Zulu SCSI cards, you can pick them up for about 49 to 65 dollars plus shipping, something like that. And they offer a couple different kinds. Uh, the one I got is set up for a two and a half inch hard drive uh, slot. So it comes with the micro ribbon cable uh, connector or the header on the board, you know, to, uh, it's with a two millimeter pitch. And the larger ones are set up with uh, the larger cable ribbon connector with the 2.54 millimeter pitch. Anyway, what these boards do is they emulate SCSI drives based off of image files that are stored on an SD chip. And the size of the chip doesn't matter as long as it's over a four gigabyte card. And it's gotta be something newer that handles better than four gigabyte specs. So you can have a 400 gigabyte card stick in there and that'll work. It'll, the, the SCSI device, will, the Zulu SCSI board will uh, emulate a hard drive off of said image if that makes sense to you anyway I wanted to try it out with the AW4416 because I wanted a way to get some extra storage out of it not just the internal hard drive the I wanted a way to figure out how I could utilize some kind of removable storage in case um, the CD-ROM burned out my CD-ROM and my AW burned out a long time ago back in 2007 I was fortunate enough to find a replacement that even though it wasn't part of the uh, list of uh, known devices that worked it ended up working and I was able to pick it up at the time for a really cheap price and learn that you got to be very careful about places that are selling that stuff for really cheap because just a couple months later they charged me another $260 on my card I had to cancel my card and get all that fixed up because they were basically ripping me off. Anyway, for, for the chance that, uh, you know, we don't have access to uh, CD drives or something anymore, you know, we've been looking for ways to upgrade the AW4416 to make it, continue to make it usable in today's age and to just make it work better or faster from and be more compatible with modern stuff. With that reasoning, people have gone the route of uh, developing or finding out uh, fan mods to quiet down the fans in the units. And they've been looking for removable storage media, uh, ideas, things that would work to make it easier to swap in drives, you know, hard drives. Especially if we're starting to get to the point where hard drives for this thing are are getting hard to come by so anyway we found cf card conversions that'll work for it not everything works but there's specific kinds of cf cards out there and adapters that seem to work pretty well and they preserve a lot of the functionality of the aw not all of it we've been ha having some reports that some cards are giving people trouble with the jog shuttle function. And, you know, I'm thinking like, well, gee, you know, hard drives, like the hard drive that came in my AW, it, it was noisy, I'll give you that. But the ones I replaced it with, they're 40 gigabyte hard drives. They are much quieter than what originally came in the machine. And... I've had one fail. I was able to find two replacements that were uh, refurbs for 16 bucks and they've been working really great. But what it shows me is that there's an important need to still have some kind of viable storage system that we can easily access today. 
And so far the Zulu SCSI card may actually fill that notch or that niche. Um, my AW is one of the first iterations, so it has the SCSI output uh, connected onto it and it uses SCSI uh, internals. Um, the AW4016As, the second iteration, I think they're set up for a TAPI or IDE set systems. And with my unit being the older unit, having the SCSI system hooked up, especially with the SCSI port output on the back, I've always been wanting to be able to utilize that. And having to go through and find a bunch of different connectors and adapters, I've actually been able to make it work out for probably a cost of only around $75 total, maybe a hundred bucks total when you think about the stuff that I bought that didn't work. I've been able to make it so I can actually hook up the Zulu SCSI card to the back of my AW4416 and I can back up all my data on my drives um, and restore from there without issue. And the Zulu SCSI card allows you to create seven um, hard drive, CD-ROM drive, uh, magnetic optical drive, emulated files, you know, image files. The CD stuff I haven't gotten to work out yet, but setting everything up as hard drives does work perfectly. Now, the way you got to do this, uh, the, it's pretty simple. I mean, it, it took me a little time. I'm not totally computer li literate, but I understand a little bit. But the Zulu card requires that the chip be formatted in either FAT32 or XFAT formats. So you get a SD chip, you, put, you have to put it in your computer and format it properly. Okay, then if you already have images from say the AW or a CD or whatever, like an ISO file or an image file or a bin file, you just drag and drop that onto your chip and then as soon as you plug it into this Zulu SCSI card and power it up, uh, it will actually read that as a hard drive, an emulated hard drive or emulated CD drive. And it will allow you to transfer data back and forth. Now with the AW, here's the thing, the AW doesn't use a FAT32 or an XFAT format system. The AW will either format in its proprietary Yamaha format, or you can format in FAT16. Formatting in FAT16 is what you would use to um, transfer WAV files from the AW to an external hard drive that you can then open up with your computer and check it all out. So. You have to format the drive, or the chip, like I said, to FAT32 or XFAT. Then you have to have an image file. If you don't have an image file, it's easy to make one, which is what I was doing. You just load a text file that's onto, this, onto your SD chip, from Notepad or whatever, a text editor, and you give it the name, create... And then let's say you want to, let's say you want to make it one gigabyte storage. So you'd say create space 1042M, which equates to one gigabytes. It's a 1042 megabytes will, will equate to a one gigabyte drive. And then space, and you put HD zero, or you could do HD one or HD two. Because the numbers there are going to be the ID numbers associated with the drive. Listing it as HD is going to tell the, the Zulu SCSI board that it's going to be a hard drive. And when you, and the por portion of the title that is create 1042M, that's going to tell the Zulu drive to create a one gigabyte uh, hard drive, em emulated hard drive Im image, uh, listed as hard drive or HD whatever number you choose, HD0, HD1, HD2. 
around the AW, like with mine, uh, ID number three is the CD-ROM drive. I think ID six is the internal hard drive. So I could set it up with any of the, these emulated eight hard drives on the Zulu SCSI card as heart HD zero, one, two, four, five, and I think seven. And like I said, you, um, you can have this have any of those as hard drives. You, if you could figure out how to properly set it up for CD-ROM, you can set them up to be CD drives. So you got access to the CD information you may or may not have. And so what it does is it gives you a, a way to have some extra removable storage devices reusable storage devices on the AW to save all your information. Why did I find out that it was actually important to me? It's because my hard drive crashed before I finished, was able to finish fully mixing and producing a song that I was working on. So I was left with just a stereo sample of the song, how it was originally performed. And I had no way to save all the other information that I'd already put on there, you know, hours and hours and hours of work had gotten lost because of that. And unless I want to go redo the whole song again, that's just it. I'm up the creek. That's what I got to deal with. So now we have access to this Zulu SCSI card that seems to work for storage. And we can put up over 400 gigabytes chips in here and store all that. We might be able to just have it list work as a single drive because the AW won't recognize anything more than a 64 gigabyte drive internally. If you put larger drives in it than that, it'll still only rec recognize up to 64 gigs. So far, I haven't had any limitations showing me um, what I can and can't do with a simulated drive, an emulated drive via the Zulu SCSI card setup on the back of the SCSI output port on the AW. So now we have this and one of our own members, Benny Badman, has created a new up-to-date program that will allow us to uh, rip the files off of our internal hard drives or SCF cards and it will also allow us to image the drive completely. So now we're having um, so now we're at a point to where we have access to new modern storage devices, new media that can conveniently store all of our data on you know, like a size of an SD card, which is what, about a half an inch in length? That's it. A mini SD card at least. I'm using a mini. It's 256 gigabytes and that works. And if I can get a program that will allow me to actually read the image file because uh, right now uh, AW Miner is not reading the image files created from the Zulu, Zulu SCSI device and I imagine it has to do with how it works. Uh, like I said earlier, the Zulu SCSI device requires you to format the system in either FAT32 or XFAT. But the AW will recognize that as a hard drive, but as soon as you want to do anything with it, the AW says you have to change the media. So you can go through and you can use the AW to format um, the so-called hard drive that it's looking at through the Zulu SCSI. You need to format it in FAT16, or you can format it in the proprietary format. So it's actually kind of weird. It seems like it's now doing a format to the image file itself but the rest of the card is still being recognized by Zulu SCSI as being formatted as FAT32 or XFAT so when the when the image file is saved or created as a bin file a .bin uh, the AW Miner software isn't picking it up when the file is created as an image file .img, the AW Miner software sees it, but doesn't recognize it as being an AW uh, image file. So, 
I still haven't broken that barrier with this yet. If it does get to a point that we can figure that out, this gives us a whole new method of removable media in which we can actually transfer our files back and forth to PCs, Macs, whatever, without having to pull the hard drives out, without having to pull the CF cards out. And these cards can go right in place of the CD-ROM drive. Or it might even work going in place of the hard drives, internal hard drives. I haven't tried that yet. But I've been having some success with things. I, I'm feeling kind of lucky with how this is all working out. Now, to make it work, like I said, I ended up buying the, the 2.2.5 inch hard drive card version so it's got the small mini uh, flat ribbon cable header connector that's only a two millimeter pitch uh, the cd-rom section uses the 2.54 millimeter pitch those cards you can buy from uh, online and uh, they use the full-size sd cards uh, the the two and a half inch drive card which is a laptop card they use the mini or micro SD cards. And since that's what I had laying around, the, you know, that's what I went for. Plus my AW being the first iteration uses laptop drives. And essentially I possibly could just fit this card within the hard drive section. I know the ribbon cable connects up just fine. Whether or not it would read anything, that's what I don't know. And it'd be kind of curious to see how that works out. So maybe I'll do that in the future here. But at the moment, I'm really happy with being able to find out that uh, I've been able to successfully transfer files back and forth. So I had to find an adapter. So there's a place called cablesdirect.com out of Michigan. And I was able to pick up a HP, which is a half pitch 50 D sub, uh, male to male adapter. I've also was able to pick up one that's male to female adapter in which they adapt to the three and a or to the uh, 2.54 pitch ribbon cables and At that point, you know, I was able to plug that into the SCSI port on the back Then I was able to plug in the ribbon cable of that then I had to get another adapter that plugged in the 2.54 pitch cable and jumped it down to the uh, two millimeter pitch cable which is what my card is to plug it all in together and it worked no problem everything did exactly what it was supposed to do now if I would have bought the full size SCSI, Zulu SCSI cards with the full size SD chips then I wouldn't have to have that extra conversion it would just be plug the uh, the SCSI adapter in the back, hook it up to the ribbon cable, and then hook the ribbon cable directly up to the card. Now, here's the other thing. You could buy the full-size cards, and you can put them in where the CD-ROM drive goes, and then they should immediately detect. These cards, you may still have to provide power from an outside source. I know I, I'm running power on mine via my USB outputs on my laptop, but you could also just get a connector that plugs right into the wall. These cards are designed to get power from whatever source they're plugged into, such, I mean, if the AW provided power through its output, it should power up these cards. But I don't know if the AW is actually designed to do that on this report since external drives are generally designed to be plugged into the wall. But it might provide it through the CD-ROMs. So that's a thing to try out there. I can try it later. I can still just hook all my stuff up to the CD-ROM drive with my adapter that connects into the smaller card and go from there. But anyway, for, like I said, about $75, maybe 100 at the most, these Zulu cards, Zulu SCSI cards, with the proper adapters and an SD chip will be a working source of removable media for storage use for our music, our data files, our WAV files, for everything that's been recorded, 
on the AW 4416. And you'll be able to remove, well, you'll be able to load in the data on there, you know, back it up, and you'll be able to restore from there, no problem. Uh, if, we, if it's possible that we can get it figured out, what kind of program to use to allow us to read the image files and pull that data off onto our computers, then we'll be set. You won't have to do um, any kind of stuff to remove uh, the hard drives or your CF cards to convert the information with Benny Badman's program, the AW Miner. You could potentially just replace your CD-ROM drive and uh, not have to worry about any of the noise or anything that's created from the CD-ROM or the fan. And you just have an SD card just sticking out right there. You just grab it, pull it out, pop it in your computer, read the information, do whatever you want to do with it. Put it back in there, reload it, you're done. So that's the only little step we're missing at the moment. It's just finding that, that bit of software that'll allow us to read the image files to be able to do that. Once we're done with that, I mean, if we're able to actually succeed at doing that, we'll have a viable new source of uh, modern, up-to-date storage devices that can work on our AW4416s keep these things relevant and useful within the next you know 10 20 30 years who knows anyway this is brian for the aw crew uh hopefully you guys were able to understand everything i was talking about and you stuck out this video and hopefully it's of interest to you guys because i actually this has been something i've been wanting to be able to accomplish for quite a while now i'll see you guys later